part of being me as uh, Johnny Abarientos. Siyempre, kalahati nun, Alaska franchise. You know? I've been started there. They give me a chance. They believe in me. They trust on what we have. You know? Eating namin, what I have. So, very blessed ako. Naging part ako ng journey ng what they call it, the team of the 90s. Pero sad down, you know, sometimes great things come up to the end, you know, na you never expected. So, especially doon sa mga nagdadasal sa amin, nagdadala ng payong, pag you played against Ginebra, may mga pareha kong mahagis. Yung mga tao na yun, yun yung iniisip ko na all the way through nagmahal sa Alaska Mills Man, di ba? Then all of a sudden, maririnig ko rin yung worst news na marinig mo. Kasi syempre, TV without Alaska para hindi ko kreto. So sad. Pero, ganun talaga. Maybe part of the pandemic they can cause them para siguro umapot na sila nito. And I truly believe at some point, you know, hoping na hindi naman retirement franchise, sana makabalik ulit sila para makompleto pa rin. Yeah, first, um, that was my first year with Alaska in 91, and I was with, I was with Sean, I was with Juan Alvarez, Juan Alvarez was, was, I think, hurt during that time, no, 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 he was okay already, he was good, uh, Frank Killing was our point guard, and, um, I think Eugene Kilpan was there, our point guard, mm -hmm. yes, and, um, of course, the first is always going to be historic and uh, unforgettable. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm part of the history. The first, the first um, chapter for Alaska. Unfortunately, I was there in the last one. <laughs> I knew this was coming from three, four years ago um, because I, I'm still in contact with a lot of people in Alaska, and I know what's happening there. But this morning was a bit of a surprise um, hearing that news. But, but you know, um, I, I knew eventually that it was going to happen, but I didn't know that it was going to happen this soon. Once we sold the company, I, I knew that at some point this might be an eventuality. And it's just come to a situation where the company wants to, to refocus their efforts. But it's been an amazing journey, really, when you, when you look at it, 35 years. 31 finals appearances, 14 championships, and a Grand Slam. And those are nice things to to have, but I think what I treasure really most are the, the, the relationships that I've built over the years um, with our coaches and players, uh, with several of you in, in sports media. I've, I've really enjoyed the times when we did get together, whether we're talking about a game or whether we're talking about the league. Uh, I've appreciated my partnership uh, with the PBA and having served the PBA to help make it a better organization. Um, as they say, all, all good things come to an end. And at the end of this season, uh, it'll be our 35th and final season in, in the PBA. Um, really, really tough, guys. But, um, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for um, a good ride. It's, it's been fantastic. And that was Alaska legends, Johnny Abarientos and Jojo Lastimosa. And of course, the Alaska team owner, Wilfred Uitengsu, who was emotional yesterday when he announced that the, his team would be retiring at the end of the Governor's Cup or at the end of this PBA season. But bago natin pag-usapan yung mga sad or mga sad memories ng pag, uh, eventual pag-alis ng Alaska sa PBA, good memories naman muna tayo dahil we, we're gonna look back on the glory days of the Alaska Milkmen and the Aces but we're going to talk about two. We have a guest for today. This is uh, Spin Zoom In. Welcome sa mga ating mga fans at readers. Uh, this is our show where we put uh, athletes, officials, and coaches on the hot seat. And for today's guests, we have two Alaska legends who will talk about the glory days of Alaska. But 
before we introduce our guests, uh, pakilala ko muna or kamustahin ko muna ang mga kasama ko sa panel. Uh, hi, my name is Kylo Sakamas. It's my pleasure to be on the show. Uh, together with me is Ruben Tarado. Mamaya si Sir Jerry Ramos, our associate editor. He's gonna catch up later. But for now, nandito si Ruben Tarado, ang lead correspondent natin na maaga nagtrabaho ka, kahapon dahil sa shocking news na binalita sa atin. Ben, kumusta? Uh, ayos naman, Carl. At uh, welcome sa ating mga viewers sa Spin Zoom In. We're live on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, no? O, tama ka, Carl. Medyo nakakalungkot nga yung naging balita, lalo na sa mga long-time PBA fans. Although may mga rumors na, na tayo naririnig, medyo nakakagulat pa rin nung nangyari na talaga. So, tama ka, Carl. Um, iwanan na muna natin yung sad, ano, yun, no? yung sad na pangyayari. Balikan natin yung mga happy moments ng uh, Alaska. May, may nakared nga ako ngayon, eh, in honor of the Alaska team. So, samahan niyo po kami ngayon. Alaska fan ka ba, Ben? Actually, hindi. Actually, pure foods ako. Oh. Uh, I remember yung 96, no, na tinalo ng Alaska yung pure foods, no, in, a, in an epic series, no. And, pero, respeto tayo sa Alaska, no, with the organization. Grabe yung pagbuo, pagmold ng kanilang team. At uh, itong dalawang bisita natin, our two guests are, uh, were part of that, no, in that uh, Alaska team na napanalo ng maraming championship. So stay tuned po. Yun na, yung nabanggit ko nga sa spin POV nung isang araw, Alaska has been the model for independent teams. Medyo nag, uh, nag steady. Hindi, medyo, medyo hindi sila nakapagkuha ng success the past few years, but they have been, before that, they have been the model for independent teams with the way they've run their organization. But yun na, pakalala natin ang two guests natin today. First, Si his uh, Captain Marbel, a former MVP ng PBA at, at siyempre Alaska great uh, Sir Kenneth Durendes. Cap, good afternoon. Cap, wala ka tang camera. Ano ka mute si si ah, saka, no, Commissioner. Okay. Oh. No, kumay, siyempre. Mm-hmm. Balikan na lang siguro natin, Carl. Oh, so, wala pa. Maka... Sige, bago, na, bago siya maka, ano, si... Yung other guest na muna natin, Ben, buti naka, nakahabol itong guest natin. Una si Sir Kenneth Durendes lang naka, nakapag-confirm. But uh, early today, nakapag-confirm itong second guest natin. At maraming salamat sa guest na to dahil sobrang fitting rin na dahil nandito siya ngayon. And he's, he's none other than Sean Chambers, the super import. Uh, the resident import of the Alaska franchise who's been there for the longest time. Sir Sean, good, af- good evening. Good evening. Thank you for having me. you are. How yeah. are you? Good. You hear yeah. that? Kenneth, yeah. how are you? Yeah, yeah. Diyan na nga si Kenneth Durendes, the Captain Marbel. Cap. Oh, medyo nagkakaproblema. Can you hear us? Tayon talaga. Wala talaga. But, uh, but before we uh, greet, let uh, Kenneth greet. So, Sean, can we, I'll just warm you up. Has it sure. sunk in already? The news so, yesterday about Alaska retiring at the end so of the it, season. It's definitely like um, I mentioned before, it's kind of like, you know, you're losing a family member. Um, it's been a part of my life since I've been 24 years old. Um, Alaska brought me over um, to take over we place an import and from then on i have um been part of the organization even after my retirement so i've been still able to work as a consultant under mr we can and work with the coaching staff and uh, continue to be a part of the alaska family um, i think what mr we can stated in his message was um although this is definitely um heartbreaking it's, it's hard to see the team go But the memories, uh, the championships, the the brotherhood that we built with one another, um, it lasts a, a lifetime. Uh, so our legacy will live on forever. Um, but um, it's uh, even still today in my current uh, position and living here in California, I'm still reminded of the the greatness that we were as Alaska Milkman and playing for the PBA because. Anytime I see a Filipino or out and about or at a restaurant, just happened on Saturday, um, 
I'm getting recognized for the great work that we did as players and, and, and the way we did it, because we always did it with such integrity and we did it with such a brotherhood, um, the way we played. Sir, how, how big of a, a part of your life was Alaska? Was it, did the team turn you into a Filipino at heart? Talaga, yeah, Champre Talaga. So, you know, um, when I first came over for the the IB All-Star, you know, I was looking to land a place to, to where I can stay and play for a team. And so when Alaska called me back a year later, it was like I instantly felt at home. And so after 13 seasons and playing in the PBA and sometimes playing twice in a conference in one year, um, it was – my home so i was spending more time in the philippines than i was back in california and i think more most importantly was the way my teammates and the families embraced me and made me part of their families and I, and first of all I, I also had to be willing to be all in with the filipinos right i wanted to be mm -hmm. um, with them and not be the american the outside looking in so i always made it a point on my end to make sure that whenever there was anything that I can do to to show my love and appreciation for my teammates, that's what I would do. So therefore, I became, you know, an accepted and adopted Filipino, you know, with the families and the Ninongs and uh, being God godfather to quite a bit of the kids and, and a Ninong to a lot of this, the children that were born from with Jojo and and Dickie Bachman and, and Bon Hawkins and, you know, and even Johnny. So um, I, I took that to heart, you know, what that meant to be an Eno. Um, and, and I think one thing, uh, going back to Mr. Uitento, I think, as I was mentioning with Joe Lots, is like the one thing that really struck me and made me feel so appreciated and made me feel honored was that Mr. Uitento sent me a text message yesterday and said he wanted to um, talk to me, you know, mm -hmm. and I instantly felt like, oh man, that's, that's something's not good, I think. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I said, please yeah, call me right away. So he calls me in about 10 minutes and he goes, you know, he, the, 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 the joke that we have amongst all the Alaska players, everybody calls me Chambers, you know, not Chambers. So he goes Chambers. And I go, let me guess you sold the team. And he goes, no, I didn't sell it, but I, this is definitely going to be our last conference. And I can tell he was getting a little emotional. He was like, mm -hmm. you know, I just want you to know from me, I want you to be one of the, uh, first to hear it. I don't want you to hear from anybody else, but you know, we're at a place right now that we're going to make this our last conference and we want to finish with the bang. And he wanted me to hear it first before I heard it from a news outlet or from anybody else. And then what I told Fred was, I'm so honored because I don't know any other import that played in the PBA that's going to get the phone call from the team owner to let them know they're going to no longer have a team. And that spoke volumes to me of our relationship that we built over these years. You know, the fact that he took the time out, like I'm the import, right? You know, um, I'm here in California being a, a, a principal at a middle school and Fred still took the time out to call me and say, hey, I want you to hear from me first. Yeah, like you said, that uh, speaks volumes of how big a part you were for the Alaska franchise. But like you said, you're in California. So, sir, we would like to thank you again for squeezing in your time. I know, I know it's late there, but thank yes. you for granting us this uh, time for the interview. Ben, ikaw na muna. Ikaw na muna mag... Bago natin, i bago makabalik si Kenneth, Sir Kenneth, ikaw na muna magtatanong kay, ano, kay, mm -hmm. kay Sir Sean. Yeah. Sir Sean, um, just want to ask... Uh, Let's look back at uh, your start with Alaska. What was sure. the story behind you joining Alaska? What was the story? Who contacted you? And uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's still not, it's still, Coach Tim Cohn wasn't the coach yet, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So could, you, could you tell the story? Yeah. So I was back at home in California, my university at Cal Poly, and I was training and hoping I'd get a call to go play overseas somewhere. And I get a call from, um, the guy, I think his name was Paul Allen. He was the guy who was one of the, the gentlemen behind the tour, the IBA tour that took us over to the Philippines. And he told me like, hey, the, a team called Alaska is looking for a player to replace the import they have there. And they needed me to leave like within a day. And I was like, okay. 
And so I called my mom and told her I'm heading to the Philippines. And so I, off I went. And um, I remember landing and standing, like getting there and didn't know much about, you know, uh, the team. But I remember going to my first workout. And as a matter of fact, the other import was still there. But my my energy, my style of play was instantly, um, um, the players were instantly drawn to it. They were like, oh, my God, this is the guy we want and need. And so, you know, kudos to uh, and much appreciation to Frankie Lamb. Abby Gadabin, you know, Yoyo Villamine and Ricky Riloso. And of course, the three rookie was Bong Alvarez, um, Boy Cabahu, and Rick Rick Morata, and even Eric Octomanano, right? So those guys were in and, and B-Boy Ravana. It's like those guys, every one of those guys took me under their their wings, you know, and really showed me a lot of love, and especially Frankie and his family. Um, so it was an instant hit. Uh, we we were in last place, and we ended up taking third place. Back then, it was pretty big to take third place uh, when they had the third place position. So then we took a tour of the Baguio, and it was really, you know, eye opening to how much I really love the Filipino culture and what it had to bring, and how much they appreciate uh, basketball. So then I came back, and that's when everybody realized that I they thought I was six three, and they measured me at six one. So then everybody realized, like, oh my god, we can have this guy for every tournament, you know, for every 6-1, 6-3, 6-2, any tournament that American was under 6-4, 6-5, I was all in. So, um, and so then it went to um, that the first year when, you know, we 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 played Pure Food in the finals um, when we had two imports, when I had Carlos Clark, and I remember I was always completely um in Nabbard and, and appreciate Jojo lost him also game and he was one of the guys I like god man it'd be so cool to play with that guy and I remember Tim so I was there like you said I was in on the team before Tim was a coach and then the following conference Tim became our a consultant and he started sitting on the bench and then the next season he became our coach so I was on the team before Tim uh so that's a very good trivia story right there and so then uh the next year we picked up Joe Loss and then it was Joe Loss Bong Alvarez and myself and, and Eugene Cuban, and we, and we won that championship in 91, which is one of the greatest memories that I still have, you know, uh, to win that championship against Wes Matthews and, and against Hinebra, or back then, Aneo, I think they were. I, um, you cannot build a better story legacy for yourself when you beat Hinebra in your first championship. And then, uh, you know, a few years later, we had some championship gaps, and then when 94 hit, by then we picked up, you know, Bon Hawkins, Putch Wingo, Jeff, you know, I think Jeff came afterward, but we had Murray Costello, and we really started hitting all cylinders. And it was an absolute, like, joy to be a part of. I mean, every day we knew each other had each other's back, and we also knew every day we stepped on the court, we felt we were the better team, no matter who we played. And then when 90, we won the championship in 94, then 95, 96, we were just seriously hitting on all cylinders then. And then in 97, I think that's when we picked up Kenneth uh, Dorindas. And when we picked up Kenneth, we were clearly the most talented team that I think we were better actually in 97 than we were in the Grand Slam team in 96. We were, we had way more talent in 97 when Ken joined the team. Um, and we still have the core of the group, but that was the year of the Centennial team. So we actually had a chance to go back to back Grand Slams, right, Diba? Um, yes, uh, yes. But Kenneth was also the other player. Like when we were playing against Kenneth, I was so like completely amazed by Kenneth's skill level and how good he was. And when he was playing for Swift, I thought he was the best player I've ever seen in the PBA. Um, and then when he joined us, it was like almost unfair. You know, uh, and we had Jojo, Johnny, Long, Kenneth, myself, and then we still had Putch Wigno and Chris Bellato. We were clearly the best team every time we stepped on the court. I think uh, dito si Com Commissioner Duremdes. Com, narinig mo ako kami? Okay na ba? Medyo we're still up. Wala pa rin? Oh, with Commissioner, no? But uh, going back to Sir Sean, you mentioned, let's go back, Sir, to, dun, dun po sa Grand Slam, no? In 96. And if, yes. if I'm not mistaken, 
you played in the Commissioner's Cup, right? Uh, yes. As a replacement import. Uh, of course, we're used to seeing you in the Governor's Cup, smaller imports. But how was it playing in the Commissioner's Cup, playing against, you know, other well, imports? We had a we had a similar situation that happened the year before. A lot of people don't know that Kim, Tim had called me and said, hey, there's a chance we may need you to come over and replace Derek Hamilton. And I was like, okay, let me know. I'm ready to go, you know. And then um, um, uh, things worked itself out. But then the following year, the very exact same thing happened. But this time it was like, okay, you need to get on the airplane and you need to come fill in for us. We were like four, three games away from getting into the finals. And so I was like, okay, I got there. And back then I was a little bit quite not in shape yet. Um, but... Are you with there? Yeah. So, um, so I was not, um, I was not, I was not intimidated about playing against the bigger imports. I was fine with it, and I just felt that I had to use what I I can do to to make ourselves successful, like kind of beat them down the court. You know, Kenneth Redfield was a tough matchup, uh, but some of the other guys I was I was okay with, uh, to be honest, because I wanted to play inside, but then I could use my quickness and size and beat them down the court, and I can defend a bit. So that was one of the advantages I had. I can still defend a big because of my strength and the way I can get off the floor and block shots. Um, and so one of the reasons um, when people ask why I have seven rings is because that following year, before Devin Davis got there, I played in the Commissioner's Cup for three games, and we went 3-0. and out. We won the first three games, but again, you know, we had Kenneth and everybody were there. Um, and so then we went on to win the championship. So I've always lobbied and complained to Mr. Uwe Tinsel, like, hey, I deserve a seventh ring because um, I was part of that that 98 championship team before they all left for the Centennial. Sir so Sean, were, were there, was there any regrets about, of course, the, the country came calling in uh, when they needed their, uh, their services. They came calling in. Uh, everybody's been mentioning that Alaska would have won the 98 Grand Slam if not for the Centennial team. But what's your thoughts about that? Do you think uh, observations of the fans are correct? You know, I love the Philippines so much. I would never question, you know, playing for the country and what that meant to all the players and getting a chance to play uh, international basketball. But uh, but that was definitely a more talented team than our 96 team. The, the Grand Slam team was super cohesive and we were very talented, but that 97 team, which we added Kenneth Dorindas, we were by far one of the most skilled team ever that I've ever been a part of. All right. Carl, back to you muna. I think my, uh, we have a lot of messages on Facebook now, uh, Sir Sean, so <laughs> Carl, back to you muna. Okay. Yeah. Sige, let's read some of the comments first ito, Sir Dodo was May sinabi siya sa ano. May binigay siya. Si from Arnold Arnold Cabral. Sabi niya, visit kayo nung bata ako. Madalas din nyo ako pinapatulog dahil parati mong tinatalo. Hinebra ko. Especially ikaw, Durendes. Classy organization. Ito from sa YouTube naman. Sabi niya, si Cristel Asyong. Sabi niya, Sir Sean Chambers, who is your greatest rival import? Um, I would say uh, Lamont Struthers. Um, Bobby Park was a guy that I absolutely admired the most. But I think playing against Lamont earlier in his career, I was able to get the best of him. And then as I was getting older, Lamont was able to get the best of me. Um, I thought Derek Brown was also pretty phenomenal. Um, a lot of people would think I would select um, Carlos Briggs or Tony Hedges, But... I appreciate the consistency of Lamont Struthers and also Derrick Brown, how well they were able to maintain their success over a long period of time. Nice. But if I just, if I made, can you just, can we just go back to, again, to the first few years of your career with Alaska? I, I, I'm just curious, was there, or when did you know or find out that you would be a perfect fit for Alaska. Was there a specific play where that made you say, um, I, uh, I, I would be here for a long time? 
I, I believe it was my first season. It was Abi Gadabin. Mm. So Abi Gadabin would give me rise to, to the game sometimes. And Abi Gadabin mm. told me if I respect the Filipino people, respect the country, and respect the game, and respect the PBA, that I'm the type of player that can play it for a very long time, like Norman Black and like Bobby Parks. He was like, the way that you play, the Filipino people admire the way you play. Just make sure you don't get mayabang. <laughs> stay humble and stay mabayat, and then you'll play here for a very long time. So that was Abigail David. Yeah. Can you, rank, can you give a ranking of your greatest rival in Perth, aside from uh, you mentioned the uh, Lamont Struthers? Um, like I said, Lamont Struthers, Derek Brown. Um, I don't know if anybody remember um, Walker Russell. Do you remember that guy? Walker Russell? I'm not sure. Yeah, and uh, Dexter Shouts. Remember Dexter Shouts? Mm -hmm. I thought Dexter Shouts was one of the best imports I've ever seen. And um, 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 Gary Keenan, remember that name? He was also extremely good. And, mm -hmm. yeah, and then um, um, I think those are the ones. And, uh, of course, Kenny Travis. San Miguel. So those were the imports that I admired the most. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, I think that there's Sir Kenneth Durende. Sir Kenneth, kumusta ang ano? Okay na bang ano? Ah, signal niyo po? Yes, sir. Yun. Finally, good afternoon, Neto, sir. Yung signal is not, it's, it's bad, bad, bad signal. Yeah. Yun nga, yung ba, first question ko kay Sir Sean kanina, tatanungin ko rin sa'yo, has it sunk in yet na yung na finally mag-re-retire uh, or mag-disband ang Alaska at the end of this season? Ano ulit? Kung nag-sink nag na, so, na, <laughs> na ba sa'yo, sir, na mag- Kung nag-sink na ba sa'yo, sir, na magre-retire or mag-disband ang Alaska at the end of the season? Medyo mahina pa rin natin yung signal ni Sir Kenneth. But anyway, but... Before he he gets back, ito, oh, let's read. You mean, yung sinking na sa akin yung... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yan. Alaska sa PBA. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Oh, hirap talaga. Um, until now, parang... No, no, uh, hindi. Oh, hindi, hindi, hindi pa rin tayo makapaniwala na for after... For 35 years, so no, mawala sa sa PBA. It's a sad day, everyone, especially for our uh, diehard fans, and also dun sa mga uh, friends and relatives uh, na shock sa news. But uh, again, uh, yun talaga yung buhay. Basketball, uh, we can go, but uh, important dito is uh, the, the memories and the legacy that we left. That's really uh, important. What are your fondest memories, Kome, or ng, uh, being part of the Alaska franchise? The fondest memory. I think, uh, one time that was traded to Alaska in '97, I think uh, that's the last one first for 1997. Because uh, mm -hmm. uh, I believe the uh, I have the bright future for Alaska organization. I can see that the the the, the professionalism, the way they run the uh, the closeness of uh, the player. And uh, I know that uh, under the uh, so <laughs> No, wala po. Let's see, Sir Kenneth. But 
yun nga, can I just ask you, Sir Sean? Again, yes. Uh, like what I asked, uh, Sir Kenneth, can you mention also some of your fondest memories? Like, as, af, apart from what we've mentioned uh, at the start of the show. So uh, some of my fondest memories is really yeah. the time that's spent with the teammates. Um, besides, one of the first championship was was quite memorable. Um, then what Mr. We tend to did all the time was once we um, – won a championship we went on these amazing you know trips as a family so i was able to visit as part of our bonus we went to hong kong we went to sydney australia we went to um we went to hawaii twice uh, we went to guam um we we actually took trips to disneyland one year and another year we went to san francisco um so by winning all those six championships they also included these amazing trips and and um, an amazing uh, bonuses, uh, but what I remember most was was really after games, uh, after games and going to have dinner with everybody and their teammates and um, with our teammates and and, and have a just kind of debrief about the game, good game or a bad game, uh, and then just the things you guys don't see from the outside looking in, but our practices and. You know, we have morning practices, late practices, and the way we all pushed each other and, and worked hard for one another in those moments is where you really feel those teammates that we really bond together as brotherhood. And those moments were amazing, you know. Uh, and then, um, like I said, winning those championships is is a, it's a combination of putting it all together. So. I'm, I'm very proud of those memories. I'm very proud of the legacy that we're going to leave behind, and uh, what we've accomplished is going to last forever. Yeah, nice, nice memories. And before we, we ask you more questions, we'd like to introduce Sir Jerry Ramos. Sigurado na cover to nung time yun nung ano, 90s. Sir Jerry, how good afternoon? Hi, Carl. Good afternoon, Ben, Com uh, Kenneth, and. John, I know it's morning or it's uh, late evening out there. Yes, Good sir. evening to you. Sorry for being late. Nasa <laughs> meeting lang kasi ako. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Sir Jay. Baba may mga gusto ko ng ano? Unang questions for our guests. Unak po. Uh, <laughs> si, sige, si Com Kenneth muna. Com, uh, I, I've talked with uh, Jojo Lastimosa yesterday and sabi niya yung yung group niyo ng Alaska in the 90s uh, may Viber group pa rin kayo very active pa rin no and sabi niya baka mas magkaroon daw kayo ng more reunions this time especially na eto nga mawawala na yung yung Alaska tama ba yon ano Com Kenneth Medyo mahina ata signal ni ni Tom oh, sir. No? Baka dapat oh. si Sir Sean mo nang tanungin mo. Yes. Ah uh, yeah. Hi Hi Sean. Me. Yeah. Uh Jolas told me yesterday that uh the group remains uh, very active and remains in constant in contact with each other and possibly yes. more reunions will be made in the light of, you know, the impending uh, disbandment of the Alaska franchise. Are you going Wait, home back here and have another reunion with the with the with your former teammates? Yes, absolutely. We're gonna plan on something. We're gonna get together. We're really hoping the current group of aces make a strong run to the finals this year, and um, yeah. hopefully we can all come back for that. Um, if they do make it to the finals, I for sure will be back. Uh, Mr. Uwe Tinsel and I talked about that this morning. Um, so wow. Fred is definitely planning on coming back if they make it to the finals or even to the playoffs. Uh, we're wow. going to be on a trip to go back. But uh, we, we stay in contact. We're in a, a Viper chat room. And, you know, when holidays come up and birthdays, whatever have you not, we're, we're constantly sending each other a message. And, you know, it's like a true family, true brotherhood. Sean, Sean, can I ask you one thing? Uh, there were talks uh, in the past that 
you're supposed to be uh, appointed as Alaska coach. How, how true is that uh, report or rumors? <laughs> um, there were some strong rumors and uh, there was some strong um, discussion about it, but there's also um, some negotiating going on as far as more with um, some of the uh, the the in the uh, UAP. So okay. we still got things going on where we're probably going to be trying to get back over and probably be helping out and being part of one of the UAAP teams. Okay, but w w would you would you be willing to leave your your job in the U.S. to to coach here? Um. We're negotiating that. <laughs> yeah, that's all in negotiation. Yes. So if it okay. you know if it makes sense, we're definitely I'm definitely listening um, to uh, several people that are along with Mr. Uitens, who's um, being kind of my that now the table is flipped because now Mr. Uitens is my consultant um, in working <laughs> and talking to a couple of the, the the teams over there because he wants to make sure. If I do return, he wants to make sure that I'm taking care of the way he has taken care of me all these years. Uh -huh. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Appreciate it, John. Yes. Back to you, Carl. Yon, thank you, sir. Ito, marami mang, may mga questions pa dito sa YouTube and Facebook. Basa, basa pa tayo na ilan. Uh, ito, uh, from... Ito, uh, comment pala from... Emmanuel Lopez sa YouTube, sabi niya, wala pa rin tatalo sa Alaska. Ito sa great ride, lagi akong sangkis at that time against Kina Hawkins, yes. Johnny A. Jojo, <laughs> Coach Vino, Coach Tim Kuhn. Ito another from, on Facebook, it's from Leo Baltao. Hindi gaganda ang PBA kung walang Alaska team. Parang Hinebra, Pure Foods lang din yan. So, there, so Sean, regarding that, uh, relative to that question, uh, how big of a loss is uh, Alaska going to be uh, in the PBA? I think it's a huge loss. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be huge because you need somebody, the independent programs, to fight the big, the big programs, right? Mm -hmm. um, without Alaska and without um, um, Morocco and or some of the other teams that are like, you know, they're their independent teams. Uh, you have all the sister teams, you know, playing against each other. It takes away a little bit of the excitement from the fans, you know. There was not to see an Alaska team play against Hinebra or San Miguel or even before San Miguel and Purefoods became partners, when Purefoods was by itself and even Sunkiss, it was a true rivalry. Uh, and that made for more excitement Bye. for the fans and made the league strong. So and even back when we had Shell, so when we had all those other teams and we're all fighting against each other, um, we had all these different companies. It wasn't, um, it doesn't seem like there was uh, any favoritism. We were all trying to beat each other. And so therefore the championship rotated, right? You would have in one year, you would have Alaska win, San Miguel won, and then Maybe Pure Foods or Sunkiss, you know, the, the the titles were rotate like that, you know. And I think for the PBA, getting back to that kind of balance is going to be huge when it comes to um, drawing in the crowds and in the crowds how it was back in the 90s. You know, our championship crowds in the 90s were amazing. You couldn't get into the uh, Quinetta or, or Araneta back then. But you mentioned about the... Uh the championships rotating among the teams but in the in 96 you the Alaska was able to sweep all those championships but can you say that that year your team was uh i mean they 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 are uh, saying that the uh the saying that there's a built over bot do you think your the Alaska team that time and the 90s team that that team was built and not bought right so if you look at that team was built, right? We built our team through the draft. Mm -hmm. We made a few trades. And, um, and I, you know, I don't want to get in trouble with the current PBA. You know, mm -hmm. I understand how things work. Mm -hmm. But um, you look at some of the, the way some of the trades are happening in the PBA now and some of the, the guys, some of the better players are being traded for role players. 
it just doesn't feel good or look good, even from somebody who lives in California now. You know, mm-hmm. when you see all the 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 teams that are like, um, I'm trying to think of the the star kid now for, at San Miguel, um, that Perez, was, per, yes, Perez. So right, he gets traded to San Miguel for two guys or three guys, but. I mean, let's be real. I mean, he's a superstar, you know, and he's a potential a national player. And it just it doesn't add up, and it doesn't add up to the fans. So when Alaska build a team, we build it through the draft. And when you build it through the draft in the way Alaska did, it will have its time to go up and down flow, right, because everybody else is going to have the same opportunity to get really great players. I mean, when you think about the team that Kenneth played that one year, when they had Nelson Isaitono, they have Verhel Manassas and Kenneth Ramless and Solis. I mean, those guys were so good, but then it rotates because we all had pretty even teams. And so it was like whoever shows up that that conference was going to win, or a lot of times the import can make an unbalance, right? If you had a really good import that you trust and that can play with your guys, they can help you get to a finals. And that would happen with Alaska. We had such a connection so that helped us grow for like five years but now it's like you don't feel the same way let's say this the teams at the bottom i don't think they really have a chance to win now in the past let's say still came in last in the first conference but when bobby came back for the second conference they had a chance to win but now that that's not the case anymore you know uh the teams at the bottom, I we we all know they, they don't have a chance to win. They eventually trade their best players away, you know. Uh, sir, can you talk more about the teams or Alaska's integrity through the years? I know you uh, Alaska has been known to be following the salary cap rules. Can you yeah. can you give some anecdotes and, of that? Yeah, hold on one second. I don't want my computer to die. Hold on. It's um, <laughs> You know, like Sir, uh, Sir Jay and uh, Ben, like we've mentioned, nung POV, yeah. so, modern franchise nga yung ano, uh, Alaska. So, yes, yes, Sir Sean. What, what I did, what you did know with, with Fred, mm-hmm. what Fred said, your contract was, what he was going to pay you, what you agreed upon, that's what you were going to get. No questions asked. You were going to get paid on time. You were going to get paid what you agreed to, and you are going to be paid when he agreed to pay, when you guys agreed that paid salary was going to happen. Okay? And so we, we, we worked with such an integrity when it came to your financial situation. Now, when you wanted to, after that year was over, I, I actually negotiated my own contract with Alaska. No, I didn't use an agent. No agent? No, I didn't use an agent because I had an opportunity to, like, I can go straight to Fred and straight to Tim mm-hmm. and say, okay, I heard Bobby Parks is making, <laughs> let's say, $25,000 a month. 25000 Wow. And I'm like, okay, I'm not quite Bobby, but I'll do great. If you want to give me $20,000, i will be happy with that. Okay, no problem. Okay, so, and so then I knew exactly what I was getting every year. And so what Fred would always do with me, too, was, like, to ensure that we had a relationship and that we um we had an agreement, he would also he would he would give me my first month's salary before I left back to California. Mm-hmm. So we had an agreement. So I would get like the twenty thousand or whatever it was before I even left from Manila from that last season. So and um so yeah so but we would never asking for money under the table. We were never asking for extra bonuses than what we didn't agree upon. You know, we all knew that what we agreed in our salary is what we were going to get paid. And then we were happy with that because we also knew that if you won, the more bonuses you got, you know, and then you won a championship. We knew right now, we don't know what guys were getting paid a lot of money back in the nineties or in the eighties who were getting paid more than what their salary said. But we do know Alaska won nine championships in the 90s, right? We all know who has that legacy still. And we knew where the – so we also knew that was going to last longer than monetary funds and money would. Was it key that uh, you guys were not 
as greedy as maybe some players that would uh, maybe go over the cap reportedly or so somehow. I, I thought about that today. Like we knew like some players, like, you know, they wouldn't chase money and they wouldn't chase different things with different teams. Mm -hmm, yeah. And I wonder if some team players would, if they can go back and do it all over again, would they rather just win? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cause it's hard to win. Like you think about it. I played as the import. I technically won six champs on my own and I was part of seven championship teams. Right. And then I'm listening every now and then I'll see with some of the, the local guys like the Filipinos and see who has won the most championships. Not a lot of people won more than seven championships as locals, less known as the import. Mm -hmm. Very few has won more than seven championships. Yeah. So I always wonder if guys would go back and they're like, man, you know what? I would rather have won more championships than to go chase, you know, bigger salaries and have such a roller coaster career because they wouldn't chase the salary, but then they didn't have the same kind of um, continuity Something. that they have with the team they left. Nice. Nice answers. Uh, right. Before I ask more, sir, uh, Sir Jerry, would you like to uh, add to your uh, questions? Next set of questions. Yes, Carl, uh, hindi ko alam kung if uh, Sean was already asked about uh, about his fondest memories playing for Alaska. Na, natanong ko kanina, sir, but baka may gusto kong uh, okay, ita yeah, yeah. Yeah, additional. Sir. Yeah, one of the things I didn't thoughts? mention was uh, one yeah. of the best import. <laughs> yeah. One of the best yeah. import. That was very yeah. heartfelt for me. Winning Mr. 100%. Uh, yes. it was my best import award up here. Yon. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, having my number retired, having yeah. that ceremony when my yeah. number was retired was was definitely um, heartfelt um, an honor. And um, yeah, those are some of the moments that I really cherish really the most. Having my number retired, best import, and Mr. One Hundred Percent. Were those trophies uh, above your head, uh, Shan? Uh, are those from the PBA? Uh, that one is over here. Is uh, my Mr. One Hundred Percent over here in my my Slam Dunk Championship? That's a great memory, <laughs> but that was not with Alaska beating Bill Ray. Yeah, this, yeah this. I would like to ask you about about that. About uh, the experience of yes, beating beating Bill Ray Bates in, in a slam dunk contest. Yeah, so um, I heard so much about Bill Ray Bates, and I I was unaware who he was um, because I was a young guy coming from California, and then um, yeah. everybody kept telling me Bill Ray Bates, the Black Superman, the Black Superman, and <laughs> and I was like, okay, no problem. Who's the Black Superman? No worries, and. Um, <laughs> And what I have to admit, one of my other fondest memory is um, um, playing in the ultra, and then playing my folks' experience in the ultra and the crazy crowds up in the in the in the bleachers. You know, the guy that he never, he never, the guy would yell up there all the time. And but uh, going to that slam dunk championship, going to the finals, and watching him walk into the ultra with a standing room only, he walks in with a cape and. With the black Superman cape on, and everybody, you know, loses their mind. Everybody's super excited, and they're super, you know, he's a national hero there, right? I had no idea, and and then uh, we go through our first couple rounds of dunks. We both get 50, 50, 50s, perfect scores, and then in the last uh, tiebreaker, I go first, and I get like a forty nine, and I'm like, oh man, I got a forty nine, and then he goes up and he misses his dunk. So, of course, I won the big paycheck and I became a local hero or a superstar <laughs> at overnight, you know. And that was before I even joined Alaska. Yeah. But I couldn't go. I was staying in a hotel off of Rojas Boulevard and I couldn't walk up and down the street after that, after winning the championship without being recognized. <laughs> instant, instant rock star. <laughs> 
did did that uh, winning the Grand Slam eventually pave the way for you to to play for Alaska? Uh, you mean this winning the slam dunk? Yeah. yeah. I think that had something to do with it because I think Alaska remember winning the slam dunk. And so um contests and that I that was the next year when I did come back to to play for Alaska. Okay. Okay. Back to you, Carl. Thank you, Sean. Yes. Thank you, sir. Go, Ben. Uh, can you give your uh, next set of questions? No, I, sir, Sean, I want to ask about Coach Tim, your relationship with Coach Tim, because you mentioned earlier that uh, you were actually the first one to be with Alaska. Uh, well, Coach Tim just came around afterwards. So what was your initial impressions about Coach Tim back then? And, and how how important is he in uh, in your in molding your career? Um, so Tim is like my ultimate like big brother mentor. Um, we kind of grew up together um, through the PBA. He was a brand new coach. Um, I was a young import, but I was very. Um, I came from a very distant background because I came from a very distant college. Back then, the PBA was not that structure as far as being disciplined and demanding guys to be on practice on time, you know, making sure guys were held full accountable for their actions. And Tim was trying to implement that early. Um, and because of the success I was having, I was able to be his uh, sounding board. You know, I can reiterate what, how important it was for us to be a disciplined team and do things the right way show up to practice early, you know, do all the things that organization is asking us to do because all that translate onto the basketball court, right? And how we are disciplined as we play. And um, we just really hit it off. And we just um, had such, we still do. I mean, Tim's one of my best friends and I can always call him anytime. And he'll pick up the phone if I ask him for any advice with my coaching right now. Um, um, so, even that he's with, he never now, you know, the rival, which is, uh, I, I have a hard time with that all the time I see him, you know, that he's with the the bad side, but we'll we'll let him get over it. But um, I, I just, I cannot thank Tim enough for always supporting me and having my back and always demanding that I come back for the organization, even if it was like a 6-5 conference or a 6-3, 6-6. Even what he's like, what he's doing with, with Justin right now, you know, if for him to have the the confidence in his import that okay, we can make it work in a big conference with a guy that I know we have great chemistry with and we have great camaraderie with, and we know what this guy brings to the table. So I owe Tim so much uh, for the past. Um, I owe Tim for where I'm at even still today in my presence. Speaking of Justin Brownlee, sir, um, sometimes you're you've been compared to to him, not not exactly with, with the skill set, but you know the the um, coming back here to the Philippines, right? Student import. So, what's your take on Justin Brownlee? What can you oh, man, I'm a I'm a big fan of Justin. I, I think Justin's way more skilled than I was. Uh, um, he does a lot of things that I couldn't do, but um, he he's a really good guy got a chance to meet him a couple of times when I was back in Manila back in before the pandemic hit. Um, you can tell that his teammates love playing with him and he loves playing for them, you know? So that's a big um, connection that is there because that's the way you can be successful. You got to have a, your import has to be somebody that you want to play for and with, and, and it has to be vice versa. I think Justin, uh, he just possessed so many different skills. Like, he can shoot the three. He can get to the basket. He can post up. He's super strong, and and um, and he can handle the ball. I mean, he just has a lot of – he's like a bigger version of Lamont Struthers to me, like a bigger physical build. He can do all the things Lamont can do, uh, but just much bigger. You know, I don't know what he is, about 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, I'm not sure what he is. and uh, And he has the same – what I think what, he, what one of the funny thing about him, um, Justin, he doesn't get rattled. He has the same facial expression no matter what <laughs> at the time of the game. He seems to be even kill at all time. Where, of course, you know I was different. You know I was like, 
I, you know, ah, and I was always like, let's go, you know, and my and my teammates fed off that energy because, you know, typically Filipinos are more humble on the court. They don't want to um, show too much emotion. They stay even kill. And, and I remember a lot of times Johnny would tell me, like, chill, chill, chill. And I'd be like, ah, let's get them, you know, and, and let's get So um, I think that's kind of what we're different at is, like, you you know from jumpstart you know where my energy was gonna be you know I was coming out one hundred percent fired up and ready to go and it didn't matter what team it was it was like my team had to win <laughs> and I was going to do whatever it takes to do so I think we have the same mentality but Justin is like this the whole time just I mean he'll dunk on somebody you won't see any emotions you know if I dunk on somebody I'm jumping up and down and doing my oh you know. So, so there's a difference there, but some similarities. Right. All right, back to you. We have time for questions on Facebook. Oh, okay. Nice. Nice, sir. I think comparing uh, Justin's poker face, but you are the complete opposite. Yeah. So here, here yeah. are some questions. Uh, or there's a comment here from on Facebook. Anthony Caliso. My idol, Sean Chambers. My daughter's name is Sean. Nice, huh? Wow. Yeah. Don't eat more. <laughs> Ito, from Quest, uh, on YouTube naman, from Crystal, again, from Crystal Asyong. So, Sean Chambers, which team gives you a hard time? I ain't a bayan. Um, I would say Pure Foods. I had a hard time scoring against Jerry Corriere. And they would always put him on me. And then they also had, you know, Alvin sometimes. And then they would put, um, who am I missing? Um, oh, I can't think of the, or bon, Ravenna. So they would have, oh, so Ravenna, yeah, Bong was pretty tall as well. So they had some long athletic bigs that can like give me some fit sometimes. And Jerry was just really tough to score on. So for me, because he was so, Thick and he's wide and he was very agile. He was he was one of the most probably the smartest defender that I ever played against. The other one I had a hard time was um is it Torino? Torino? Um Victorino. Manny Victorino. Manny Victorino was hard for me. Yeah. Because Manny was also about six four, six five, and super athletic. How about in Abrashan? Um, my earlier years, I had a hard time against uh, Chito Loizaga. Um, oh yeah, because he would defend you like this, and they wouldn't stop you. <laughs> they would. He would bear hug you when he defends you, and nobody would knock <laughs> on the foul. <laughs> and, um, and so. Um, I, I used to get so frustrated with Chito, but uh, and then Dante Gonzalez is it Dante Gonzalez? Dante Gonzalez, Dante Gonzalo. Gonzalo. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And Dante was really good, and and uh, and um, and so and Caesar is it Caesar Chavez? Caesar, I can't think of Caesar. 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 Yeah. yeah. So they had all those bigs, and they had a lot of fouls to give. So they would they would <laughs> foul so much, and it was. One thing they would try to do, like, okay, so let me back up. Although I played with such a fiery spirit, I never got out of my zone. So he never would try to foul you and get you out of your zone. I never got out of my zone, although I would get pumped up and I would get fired up and I would get excited about the game. But I always stayed here when it came to the physicality of the game over there. And so that was one of the things that I know a lot of the Filipinos appreciated, that I never lost my cool. And I, it was hard to not to do against Hinebra, you no. Know? And I and I think one of the best compliments I ever gotten was from Jaworski. Was after wow. like a game, and he, he like he he took a pretty hard foul on me. And when I was going up, and I got up, he was going, "Okay, I I respect your game," he said. So I'm like, "Okay, when Jaworski respects your game, you made it." Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's cool, huh? Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't it doesn't our grand Slam against them. When we won the Grand Slam, yeah. we won yeah. three games. Oh, it was like 
we were pretty dominating. He knew he's like, man, you you're just too good right now. He knew I was on the top of my game with the PBA. Yes, sir. From uh, uh, parang a related question from Mark Ryan Rojas Cua, Zaldiri Yalubit and Jali Escobar. Good? Are they good? Were they good defenders as well? Yeah, Zaldiri Yalubit was also kind of like Victor Victorino in, in the mode of that. Like Zaldi was also a big body, super athletic and jump. Um, Jolly was tough. I always felt like I was a little bit more athletic. I can get my shot off against Jolly. But I, I loved his game. He was such a nice guy, you know. He was such a good guy, and he was such a good compliment to Benji and Ronnie uh, with Shell. And even when they when they had um, Bobby was there, he really completed that team for them. Mm-hmm. But Jolly's such a really good guy, man. I really like that guy. Uh, here's here's a question from Jel Miras on Facebook, our uh, regular commenter. He says, "Hey Sean, if Mr. Fred Witengsu asked you before deciding to retire the team from PBA, what sort of advice would you have given him? Would you would you have tried to convince him to do otherwise?" <laughs> uh, that's not a fair question. I don't know if I could. <laughs> Um, of course, I'm going to be speaking with my heart and not my emotion and not my pocketbook and the money that he spends for the team, you know, uh, because, of course, Alaska is like a family member to all of us. And it's as if, like, we're losing a family member to lose the org, the team, and the PBA, you know. Yeah. And for me, although I will return back to the Philippines, but every time I've been returning back for the last 20 years since my retirement, everybody knows I'm Sean Chambers of Alaska. Now that's gone, you know, so that let, part of that is doesn't exist anymore. And they know that I'm there to help Alaska when I'm in town. So that that's going to be a tough one. OK, this one question from Tantan Millar, Millar or Millar. He's asking, would you allow your son to play for Gilas if eligible to play, Mr. Shan? Shan Gray. Oh, oh, without question. I've already reached out to Chow Reds and let him know um, I'm willing to help out and coach the team whenever he needs me. John? Uh-huh. Yeah, Diva, nice. I'm willing to be a consultant whenever. Uh, here's a comment uh, from C. Gong on YouTube. That's a comment. Uh, Growing up, I'm an Alaska fan. I remember back in 96, naglalaro ako, school namin, elementary, grade 6 ako. Team oh. captain ako, nagka-appendicitis ako. Pumutok huh? yun, and while recovering, I have, I watched Alaska win. Wala pang <laughs> one month na operation ko, may tournament kami, and that Alaska team inspired me to play basketball growing up. I wanna be a basketball wow. player like him. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, I, I'm I'm trying to explain to a lot of my friends here in the states. They're trying to they're asking me, like, explain to me what's the big deal about this? You know, a team, you know, no longer existing, and I get you. You guys really don't understand how Filipino fans are when it comes to basketball. Like people that are diehard Alaska fans, this is truly a morning going on for them. This is a sad, sad day for them like a lot of them i'm sure cried um they're extremely saddened um they're heartbroken um like the filipinos basketball fan they truly do live and die with their teams and we, they are truly part of the family and i'm trying to explain that to some of my people here in the, in the states i'm like you don't understand when i said on my facebook post like please pray for the diehard alaska fans i really mean that because they are truly heartbroken by this news. Like some of these people have grown up as little babies into being Alaska fans because of their parents or whoever that they had, they've only, they've only cheered for one team. And so to see that team no longer exists is truly a sad day for them. And even I think, Sir Sean, I think even the Inebra fans, they're also mourning because sure. I, I have, I've read a lot of comments that they're also sad that uh, Alaska is, Gone. I thought one of the classiest thing I saw uh, today was I saw a post on um, Instagram or I think once uh, 
from talk, TNT, from Talking Text. And it had a bunch of pictures of us playing against Talking Text and said, thank you for the memories and the competition. You know, the PBA won't be the same without you. And I thought, like, man, that was pretty classy. And that was really awesome to see them send a post out saying thank you for the competition and do things the right way. All right. So this one, a related uh, comment uh, from Glenn Garintol. I just want to say a big thank you to the Alaska franchise. The way you keep on beating Hinebra and other teams before makes me more of a diehard <laughs> fan of Hinebra than ever. Hashtag respect the aces. Yes. We were known as the Hinebra killers. <laughs> yes, Do you remember Coach, Coach Johnny was mentioning that there were fans that even bring umbrella. Yes. So they'll be. Do you remember those times? Or in, oh, I remember the when they used to kill boys. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. I remember the coin tossing days, yes. <laughs> uh, this question from Albert Silva. Mr. Chambers, who is the toughest local player you played against? Um, obviously, I think, of course, Alvin Patrimonio, uh, Verhel Manessis, and Alan Kaidek. Wow. Those will be my top three. And, and then later on, Danny Siegel. Oh. But I, but I like more of the guys that were grown in that that grew up in the Philippines, though not the ones that came from afar. Um, so my my top three is Alvin, um, Verhel, and Alan Kaidek, and then I would throw in uh, Sam Boy Lim in there too. Nice. You know, you think about when I started. I started in the late '80s and then played all the way to 2001. So I I played against when. Sam Boyd Lemon, Hector Kama were on the top of their game and then went through the 890s when Verhel and Alvin were pretty much dominating the league, you know, with our with my team. And then and then I'm sorry, and then ben, uh, Benji Pradas was also a tough cover. Benji was super tough. And then I finished it when Danny Siegel and all of them were starting to take off and Danny I. Danny I was pretty good when he was young. That's a hell of a cast. The yeah. Same yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you you mentioned you started late eighties and ended uh, early two thousands. Do you think? And there's another import who would match your longevity with uh, one team. Uh, I only one I can see it would be Justin. You know, and unfortunately for Justin, he, like he probably Thanks. had a chance to break uh, my championship record of six, mm -hmm. but the pandemic. Probably, you know, those two years lost is, is hard to get back, you know. And as we get older, we get older, you know. And and there's a you got a tough cast to import there this year right now, you know. But I, I, I it's it takes a very unique coach and a unique organization to want to bring the American back over and over. I think. Some of the teams are under started just, just now starting to see how that model works, like Coach, like Coach Tim has done. You know, some teams are starting to realize it and get it like, hey, we can get an import that we all know and we trust and we know that can help us win one championship. Like, that's the thing about the PBA. If you win one championship out of the three in, the, in that year, you had a good year. So that import can help you win one of those championships, you had a good year. But if you don't win one of those three, then it's like, you know, you didn't have a good year. <laughs> but it, it's tough for most teams to find the perfect import, like how Alaska found you and uh, how Hinebra found Justin now. So it's, But you think it's, what Tim has done, Tim has found, um, before Justin, he had, um, I can't think of the guy that was at Pure Foods. Bowles. Bowles. So he had Bowles and then he had the other Blakely. guy. Mark Blakely. Blakely. Yeah, Marcus. Okay. So yeah, Marcus and both. So, you know, Tim finds guys and go, hey, you know, we're going to mold you. But once you get a guy to understand the system and understand your your philosophy and can make it in the country and respect the country, that's invaluable for your team. And some teams are starting to get that. I, um, I was surprised that Norman didn't bring back the import he had last year or two years ago. Durham, maybe he's in, yeah. he's, he has a contract in, I think, Korea, Ben? Japan, Korea, Japan. Japan. Japan, 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 sorry. Japan, Japan. Japan okay, yeah. I was surprised, yeah. 
you know, and I like personally for me, I would have thought we should have brought back Mike Harris like every year. And <laughs> look what he's doing now. Mike Harris is unstoppable. You know, he won best import and we didn't bring him back, you know. So I was a big fan of Mike Harris and um somebody else. Oh, I I Sam Miguel, I think they're in their second or third import right now, right? Mm-hmm. So and the guy they had a couple of years ago, they he did pretty well. So I don't know. It, back in the back in the nineties, it was crazy. Like you last one or two games, if they didn't like you, they were getting rid of you. And that's never good for continuity for the team. Mm-hmm. So we figured it out early. <laughs> Alaska figured it out. Like we like we're gonna bring Sean over every year. The stars align for you guys, like uh, yes. <laughs> uh, this uh, another question from Christel Ashong. Uh, Sir Sean, what can you say about the PBA now, especially in your days before than today? Um, it was better in my day mm-hmm. because, again, we had more of a balance than it is top heavy now. You know, the bottom teams can beat the top teams any day. Now, all the top teams are so much powerful, they have all the talent on the top team. And the bottom teams are not that strong, and I and I just you need equity, you need you need competitive balance in order to make sure the league stays strong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and before I read more questions, Sir Jet, any more uh, final uh, questions before we let uh, Sir Sean go? Ah, uh, magpapas break sa na ako, Carle. Pero kung may mga Questions pa from FD and uh, YouTube natin. Eh, tanungin mo muna kay, kay Sir Sean. Sige, Sir. Uh, Sir Sean, before we go into the fast break, that's our segment where we ask okay. you. Uh, you have to answer the questions quickly. But before okay. we ask that, uh, just uh, let's read some more uh, comments and uh, questions uh, from Wayne it's a former summit summit here, Wayne Tulio sabi niya, Alaska is a pillar in the PBA they came in during the 80s boom lorded over the 90s and remained a strong contender since the team folding means an entire PBA fan base possibly losing interest in the league do you agree sir Sean? say it again do you agree with uh, the comment that uh, I do. Losing Alaska could lose a huge fan base of the PBA. Some more co- uh, comments or uh, su- questions uh, from Jay Chio uh, on YouTube, sir. Who would win one on one in a Tagalog speaking contest between you and Tim Cones? <laughs> um, Ako talaga. Tinko ang konti lang. Tinko. Tingin ko nga, mas nakakapag-Tagalog si Mr. Chambers eh, kaysa kay Coach Tim. Sir why did you start learning the language? Ano ka yan? Ay, nako, I was watching Petipo talaga. <laughs> the Tebo. The Tebo. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> when, I, when I was first there, I was watching Petibo, and then I would ask my teammates, Anons, I'd be like, what are you saying? Anons and Nabimo. And they were like, whoa. And I would learn, like, the Tebo, I would learn, I would learn like, words like my Ine and, and, you know, Kaleto and Kaliwad. And, and so I just started asking more and more questions. And so... And so my teammates would start teaching me, like you said, this is what you want to say, you know, announce an or you know, and then they would give me words to say to players like Kosa Nana Mo Ako. I'm like Kosa Nana Mo Ako. And I'm like, oh no, think it thinking more and things like that. I was like, you know, I started to learn to go like that, just kept asking questions or sayings and and for the most part I can, you know, I can comprehend and listen, but I can um I can pick up words, but I, I can't speak it fluently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's okay. You're so trying. Sir, 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 Sir,
Yeah, uh, uh, Sir uh, if you're at the peak of your career right now and uh, the SBP asks you to be a naturalized player for the Philippine team, would you agree about it? Sempre. Well, I'm sempre talaga. Well, absolutely. Uso, nice. uso. Uso talaga. <laughs> uh -oh. Uso. Yeah. That was, that was always one of my dreams, to be honest. Like, there was a time when I felt like myself and Bobby, like other countries, should have got a chance to be naturalized and play as locals as long as when we played there for like five or six, seven years straight. Like, we should have been able to be naturalized and be able to play as locals and stay there and not have to continue to repeat as imports. Like, in other countries, when an import stays and plays for like five or six or seven years, they were able to be naturalized. Mm -hmm. Okay, Carl, thank you. Thanks, sir. Ben, do you have any final questions before we go to fast break? Oh, uh, fast break ka tayo. And then, yeah. We'll try to contact uh, Com Kenneth. Ah. Sige, uh, saya naman. Sana makahabal ko siya. So, medyo nahihahin yeah. natin yung signal, but uh, it's going na siguro sa fast break. So, yeah, yeah. Before, we, before Sir Kenneth Durendes can come back, sana Sir Sean, uh, I hope you're ready for our fast breaks uh, that will be conducted by Sir Jerry. Sir Jet. Sige. Yes, sir. Sige. Yeah, Sir Jet. Sir Sean, a few questions that you have to uh, answer quickly and perhaps with a thunderous dunk for a fast Sige. break. Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, first question, if you didn't end up with Alaska, what team could you have played for? San Miguel. Okay. Uh, the best import for you, Billy Ray Bates, Norman Black, or Bobby Ray Park? Bobby Ray Parks. Uh, most uh, special of the Alaska Championship, your first title with the team or the Grand Slam? Grand Slam. Coach that you would have liked to play for outside of Coach Tim Cohn? Do I get choices or I got to tell you? Tell me, Coach. <laughs> Baby Doodle Pen. Wow, nice one. <laughs> uh, who was the Alaska player who intrigued you the most? Intrigued me or did I like the most? Yeah. Intrigue. Yeah, intrigue, intrigue, yeah. <laughs> um, Jojo. Jojo, wow. Why? Why Jojo? <laughs> Jojo was, I mean, yeah, yeah. He was a phenomenal player, but and he was a rock star as well, you know. Oh, yeah. All the girls, everybody loved Jojo. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hair flip, you know. <laughs> Okay, uh, Sean, the Grand Slam on the line. Who would you give the ball for the winning shot? Jolas, Johnny A, or Bong Hawkins? Johnny A, come on, easy. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> okay. Uh, who you think is the next best Alaska import after you? Kevin mm. Davis. Yeah, wow. Uh, Sean, the boat is sinking and the entire Alaska team is on it. <laughs> Who would you, who's the person that you would uh, save first? Jolas. Wow, Jolas. <laughs> ah, you really know yeah. Jolas. Ah, yeah, Jolas. <laughs> Maybe <Okay. done. laughs> well, One last question. The most memorable Tagalog word you learned? Mahalkita. Yon. Hey. Well, Appreciate it, sir. Sir, sir Chan Chambers. Thank you. 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 you. Thank you. 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 Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 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 It's definitely a tough time. It's a sad uh, time in, in the PBA, and um, but it's also a time to remember and to embrace.
the legacy and the the great memories that we we made as as an organization. Um, I I do feel so saddened to all the Alaska diehard fans because I know they are true fans and they love the Alaska Aces and. I know they only drink Alaska milk, you know, without question. <laughs> and but um, it's 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 gonna that legacy is gonna last forever. I wish there were more memories that could be made, and there's ways to make people, you know, happy through Alaska. And hopefully, Alaska will um, make a championship run for everybody to go out one last time as champions. So uh, I'm I'm saddened, but I'm also forever grateful. I'm a forever um, honored to be part of the organization i'm honored to be loved by so many fans over there in the philippines 20 years later and again we're talking to the import you know we're not talking about johnny and joe and Mon hawking that are national filipino heroes like i'm the american import that lives in california that still has such a respect and love for the country and the country has the same love and respect for me so i couldn't been more blessed to have been selected to go play in the Philippines. You know, I, I, I never can imagine my life to be this blessed and honored that I was able to play there in the Philippines. Nice, nice words. And, uh, and marami, marami salamat po. Marami salamat. And Sayang, I, I really want to see uh, yes. Kim Durand this more. Yeah, yeah well. uh, we speak to him. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Too bad. Thank <laughs> For your time. Okay. Salama, guys. Thank, Thank you, sir. You uh, good night. Good night there. Sorry, Tari, to pick you up. <laughs> Thank right. you. Right. Well, let me see. There's my, my retired oh, wow. jersey. Wow. Yeah, yeah, no? Nice. Oh, my last color jersey. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Ganda. Okay. Great, great. <laughs> All right, guys. Bye. Good, good night, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, Thank joined, you, sir. Carl, sir. As you said, by Commissioner. Yeah, yeah. Ganda. So, medyo naging medyo mahina lang ang signal niya but we're he's live now via Viber so come uh, you're live now on screen uh, welcome yes thank you so but uh, niyo ba Carl narinig niyo oh okay medyo na okay naman okay. sana narinig oh. ng mga readers natin uh, um come ano lang well, just wanna ask yung reaction mo lang doon sa na nangyari sa Alaska. Of course, you're a big part of Alaska. Uh, mm-hmm. What can you say? Medyo malungkot ang fans. Do you say, do you share the same sentiment? Yes, of course. You know, um, share the same sentiment with the fans, especially in uh, parang ngayon, uh, people tayo makapaniwala na yung, to me, uh, the best franchise ever. Uh, mm-hmm mawawala na sa PBA and heartbreaking right? suddenly dahil uh, ito yung team na uh, nagbigay sa akin ng opportunities so many opportunities na uh, nagbigay sa akin ng uh, magandang uh, future mm-hmm. Um, Kom, may sinasabi si Sean Chambers eh, na nung pumasok ka daw sa Alaska, parang mas lalong lumakas yung Alaska. In fact, mas malakas pa nga daw yung 98 team kaysa dun sa Grand Slam. Uh, agree ka ba dun? Um, bakit? Uh, kasi nung nag-start ako dun, uh, nung nag-start ako dun, hindi ko humingi ng trade no? Uh, sa sa this team dahil sabi ko uh, with a lang Alaska team uh, siguro mas ma, mas malaki ang mahihit akong uh, opportunity and uh, i- magagamit yung skills ko as a basketball player so pinagbigyan naman and then uh, na-trade niya ako noong 1997 and uh, alam mo with luck siguro no and uh, with the uh, uh, great players around. Uh, Nakalatong championship ka agad kami, dire-diretso. And mm-hmm. of course, um, it's Sean Chambers of Las Conference from 1997. So parang feel ko, uh, napakalapas namin noon dahil nga, uh, may silang yung
siguro yung na-finish yan na parang lumakas pa yung team. But again, sa akin, nakita ko, malakas na talaga sila dati pa eh. <laughs> Alam mo yun, yung, yung stability ng team, yung pride ng team, nandun na yun eh. Mm-hmm. Then, so, oh. na pagdating ko, eh, wala rin ako ibang mission kundi aside from maging part ako dun sa team na yun na napaka-special. Kaya gusto ko rin talaga makapaglaro lang ng maganda. Mm-hmm. And then scom nung ano nung 98 nga eh kasi marami nagsasabi parang kung hindi lang dahil sa Centennial team although syempre para sa bayan yun uh, kung kung baka kumpleto kayo ano yan Grand Slam uli uh, apart ka sana ng Grand Slam yes. no do you agree do you agree naman na yes. ano yes. so uh, doon mo nga makikita na ano eh na yung sacrifices na ginawa ng organization for the national team. Uh, to me, hindi pa rin palitan ng ref. When you see the way Grand Slam, sabihin natin sayang pag Grand Slam na yes, meron kami matat ng opportunity na Grand Slam Medyo choppy pa rin, Brad. Sir, Sir Jerry, baka may questions kayo. Uh, Carl. Sige, Sir Jerry. Ke, 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 Ken, ano lang yung ano, siyempre, lagi namang tinatanong yung mga ex-Alaska players. Yung ano mo lang, pinaka memorable moment or moments. Marami siguro yan with, while uh, playing for Alaska. Yes, Jerry, dami na Kenneth, siyempre, through Alaska rin, nakuha mo yung pinakamalaking contract in PBA history, di ba? <laughs> <laughs> di ba, nung rap day trade? Yan din, natin nakuha yung pinakamalaking contract in PBA history, di ba? Yan din, natin nakuha yung pinakamalaking contract in PBA history, tinatapos yung uh, left na contract for 8 years, di na tinatapos yung karyong natin sa Alaska. Pero, yeah, yeah. ang sinasabi nila, uh, nangyayari talaga yan. Players come and go. 
Pero ang importante uh, is uh, yung naiwan mong uh, respeto at uh, legacy sa team and also sa fans and sa league. No? Uh, Sige, ka nalang mga opportunity to play with your organization. Uh, at perform ka and then nabigyan ka nalang ng uh, magandang contract. Uh, yun nga lang, uh, yun tayo nakapagtapos doon ng, uh, ng career sa Alaska. So, mm-hmm. importante, maganda yung ano, maganda yung maganda yung organization, organization maganda yung ginawa ko para sa team and para sa team. Kom, ano lang, uh, nabanggit ka po ni Jolas na meron kayong Viber group, eh, no? yung mga former members ng Alaska. Uh, bago ba, oh, bago ba nang, nangyari itong uh, pag-announce ni team owner Wilfred Waiting soon na uh, ayun nga, mag-babaw uh, out na yung Alaska sa PBA, napapag-usapan na ba ito sa Viber chat nyo? Napag-usapan saan? Sa Viber group? Oo. Oh, oh, oh. Napag-usapan nyo ba? Um, wal, wala akong nanon na Viber group. Nakasama ako. Hmm. So, hindi ko alam. Baka <laughs> uh, ilan lang sila. But, uh, hindi siguro. Dahil, uh, hmm. kung, siguro, if you players, meron silang sariling uh, um, group. Pero, wala rin ako na rin. Uh, napag-usapan yung pag- uh, Oh. Bali, nagulat ka rin, no? katulad nun lahat. Yes, yes, nagulat. Nagulat nun lahat. At yung hindi mo siya in-expect na mangyayari ito. Dahil itong organization ito, again, uh, may pride to it. And uh, uh, very, ayun na yung yung the preparation sila sa organization, how they run, no, and uh, how they plan. So, nakagulat and nakapalibago na after 35 years, eh, ito yung isa sa best franchise na nakita natin sa PBA history, eh, wala na, makawala na. So, nakakalungkot. Hindi natin may imagine, pero parang Chris Patoyota rin yan ang araw na parang tingin natin, eh, forever din sila sa league, but, uh, oh, Mangyari din. So, <laughs> mangyari at mangyayari. Dahil uh, hindi natin control yung future. Yes. Tama, tama. Okay, back to you, Carl. Thank you, Koma. Yes, sir. Ito, Kom, yung tanong ko lang, yung related nga dun sa nabanggit mo kanina na you had the richest contract in TV history. Do you think that contract parang changed the landscape of mga future contracts na in offer sa mga players do you think nagkaroon ng more value yung mga players moving forward na dahil nabigyan ka ng ganong contract mo the future players were also given bigger values moving forward yes so i think uh, nagbigay na kami yun, ng more value sa player uh, aside from yun nabigyan tayo ng longer contract pero ang nauna doon before eh, it's the top 10, Alvin, no? Nagbibigyan mm-hmm. na maximum for 5 years. Saan yun? Sayang nga lang dahil uh, nag-change ng uh, nag-change ng uh, rules yung uh, PBA, so nawala na yun. And uh, hindi na rin na effective yung overseas. Alam mo, sa tingin ko yun, parang nagpapa-excite sana sa mga teams, you know? Kung mm-hmm. so, hindi nila tinanggal yung overseas, then uh, basta maraming nagbago. Siguro, yun yung reason na uh, I mean, uh, yung mga players ngayon, uh, madali, lang ang, madali lang ang buhay sa paglalaw sa professional dahil uh, uh, how, many, how, you, how many years lang yung nakakuha nila maximum yun, I think, two to three years. And yun yun sa mga top caliber players. Pero sa mga hindi naman, yun two years. So after that, pang hindi na bigyan ng break, that's it over na, wala na, considering uh, 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 ito yung time na uh, napakarami ng players. So, mm-hmm. yung, yung, 
players wala talaga ng chance na kung hindi ka mapapigyan dito, hindi ka ma-expose for first two years mo sa Pro League, wala na. Uh, hindi ka na rin makapag-demand no, ng higher salary dahil wala kang performance. So, yun ang nangyari, eh, nawala rin yun siya. Hindi na putol din after the, after the uh, eight-year contract na nagbigay sa atin through offership. So, tingin ko kung, kung mababalik yan, mas lalo siguro may excited ng mga EPA funds and yung mga players, mas lalo mapuposigi yan. Dahil may, 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 may goal sila tinitingnan every time na kami nun naalala ko pag five-star na yung mga contract ng players noong araw. Ano na yan? Makikita ko na yan. So ngayon parang wala na siya. So, well, uh, <laughs> uh, nag-iiba rin kasi ang, 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 uh, ang sports talaga nag-iipod din. Kagaya niyan, uh, even the NBA, nagbabago din sila. So, yun lang. Nawala. Sayang. But do you think, yun nga, like what you said na sana makabalik, but do you think, yun nga, pag uh, teams will be offering longer term contracts, like five years, seven years, like what Alaska offered you, or what they matched do sa mobile line, do you think mas magiging, mas maingganyo yung players na mag-stick to their mother teams in the wake of uh, unrestricted free agency na maraming lumilipat sa ibang teams for siguro greener pastures? I think dahil uh, for those players na uh, deserving naman, they should be rewarded uh, with longer contact mm-hmm. and pinagawa sa NBA. Kapag uh, alam talaga franchise player ka, may reward nila yon. And ang nakikita ko lang ngayon is wala nang identity yung, wala nang connection yung players sa team. Noong araw, pag sinabi mong, mm-hmm. hindi pa, Jowers Dian, ha? Jowers Dian. Uh, pag sinabi mong Alaska, no, Jolas Flying A yan. Pag sinabi mong Santa Lucia, ito, Espino, Aquino, parang gano'n. So, nag-talk sa mga minds ng mga fans. Yung player, na, dyan talaga siya, yun yung home niya. E ngayon, hindi mo na makikita eh. After one, two seasons, three seasons, wala na, lipat na si ganito sa so, kabilang team. After a while, ilang games na lang minsan, lipat na naman siya. So, kung akong fans, Ano bang, ano bang, ano ko dito, susundan yung player o yung loyalty ko sa team? Nawawala eh. At the same time, Ganda. yung player, wala na siyang connection dun sa fans dahil sabihin ng fans, ay ewan ko, sana madalipat na ata sa ibang team. Di ko na alam. <laughs> so, yun na nangyayari, ang bilis ng dipatan ng players. I don't know kung what's the reason behind. Uh, hindi na natin control yan dahil again, Eh, legal na magsaka pinapayagan ng, ng uh, board. Pero unlike before, yung mga 80s, 90s, para recognize mo talaga yung connection ng fans sa player and sa team. Dahil pag nanood siya, oh, eh, manunod ako ng Ginebra Bukas, nanood si Jorge, nanood si Distrito, si Valdavid. Eh ngayon, pag sabihin ko sa kamanood, eh, paborito ko yung Ginebra, ako yung paborito player na sa, ano na, Troy Norsheta. Ano yan? <laughs> Ito ko may dalawang ano lang ako, questions from the readers Ito from Crystal Asyong sa YouTube Maraming tanong to kanina kay Sean May, may, may tanong din sa'yo Kung Kenneth, sino yung gusto mo kamatch up tuwing may laro ang Alaska? Huh? Oh, masarap talaga yung kamatch up doon Team and player, masarap talaga ng Ginebra Wala ka na uh, pipiliin nun. Anywhere, anytime. Pag ginebra ang kalabang, talaga. You have to prepare. Uh, alam mo, napaka-inspiring yun eh. Challenging. When you play ginebra. Kasi, comfort advantage lagi. Ang uh, feeling mo, guest team ka, school ka lagi. So, uh, alam mo talaga na pag ginalo mo sila, eh, galit sila. And talagang frustrated yung mga fans ng ginebra. And makikita ko, uh, ito, after the game, feel na feel mo, dahil, oh, siyempre, <laughs> dinalo namin ang pinaka-popular na sa PK. Yun nga lang, time namin, uh, yung venue natin nun sa Coneta, sa Dome, sa Pasay, 
Uh, paglabas mo, eh, sorry yung sasakyan mo, daming gas mo. Tama yan. <laughs> Ito ko, last, last question from Jury Snake. Uh, Sir yeah. Kenneth, if Alaska, if Alaska wants to join as expansion team sa MPBL, are they allowed kahit wala sila home city or province? How can they join? <laughs> <laughs> ang 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 ano kasi ang uh, liga natin ay CBL is uh, LGU based no home in a way format so hindi siya pwedeng mag-join na wala sa LGU or CP or province so any 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 expansion team naman pag meron siyang partner na LGU nalo naman natin pero pag wala eh, eh, it's not possible Ano na lang, Marbel. Marbel ko tabato, Alaska. <laughs> Ayun. Yes. Ikaw, Ikaw, man, man. Man. Wala na. Hindi, okay. nagpapasalamat lang tayo kay Commissioner, no, na, na kahit medyo challenging yung ating signal, eh, oh, nairaos natin like yung, <laughs> yung oh, guesting natin kay Com. Um, Com, siguro message na lang sa mga Alaska fans, syempre, eh. They remember you nung nanalo ka ng MVP, yun nga, being an integral part of uh, Alaska. Yun na lang message mo siguro sa mga Alaska fans na naalala ka pa rin. Well, sa mga Alaska fans, especially yung mga tired fans natin, dyan nga, nakikinig sila, sila Clarice, uh, sila Dwight, sa uh, Idovilo. Uh, alam naman natin na ang uh, kalungkot uh, Alaska, alas yung MVPA, for some reasons, pero kayo ang key figures dito yung mga fans and that's why naging successful din itong organization uh, through ups and downs uh, hindi kayo bumitaw and uh, hindi rin kayo nawala ng pag-asa but then again siya nga may kasabihan nga yun welcome to an end welcome to an end eh, wala na tayong magagawa na importante dito during our time, eh, naging inspiration namin kayo and naging inspiration natin ng Alaska Aces. So, nagpasalamat, ma- nagpapasalamat lang tayo na isang uh, boss friend or thank you na uh, naging part ng basketball history dahil niya for 35 years eh, marami pamilya, marami isang bilyon ay nagpamilya. Marami siya. And uh, marami siyang napasaya ng mga basketball fans. Tumatinip pa lang. And uh, sabi niya nila. So, kaya? Okay. Stop set it. Go uh, ahead. Then, may pahabol lang ako. Okay, pahabol si Sir Com. Hello na. Sige, sir. Com, sige, sir. Uh, na, naririnig ko kasi parang magiging farewell uh, tour na yata nung Alaska yung last few games nila and baka papanoorin yung mga Alaska, former Alaska players na sa venue mismo, willing ka bang ano, sumama doon na at manood at i-cheer ang Alaska? Ako nga. Okay, salamat Kom, salamat. Kom, thank you. Thank you very much for time. At uh, ingat ka dyan. See you soon, Kom. Thank you sa nairaos natin itong interview sa'yo. <laughs> thank you sa inyo. See you soon. Thank you, thank you, Kom. Salamat, Kom. Salamat, salamat. Nairaos natin. Yun. Okay. Yun, yun. There you have it. It's uh, medyo sad but uh, at least me- medyo mixed emotions ngayon dahil nga uh, if, uh, yesterday it was announced that Alaska will be saying goodbye sa PBA at the end of the season. 
So now we look back on the good memories and we thank our guests, uh, Sean Chambers and Kenneth Durandes, for sharing uh, their good memories, the glory days of Alaska. So sana ma marami pang mga good memories ang mga ma-share natin sa mga fans ng Alaska in the coming days, in the final, in their final games sa PBA. So yun, uh, on behalf of our one-man production crew, John Mariano, my name is Carlos Sacamos. It's been our pleasure with uh, Sir Jerry and Ruben to conduct another Spin Zoom In episode. Catch us next week on Tuesday for Spin POV. Maraming salamat at uh, ingat po tayo lahat. Thank you.